Hi everybody, welcome to the Indie Scientology Podcast. I'm your host Andy Nolch and it's nice to be here with this new song. For people new to this podcast, which most people are because the podcast is new, um, this podcast has everything to do with Scientology, that interesting religion you might have heard about. Uh, This is um, one of the early podcasts, one of the first seven, which will just be basic information about Scientology uh, for people who are new to Scientology so that they can understand it. Later on, in later episodes, there'll be guests, and uh, I think it's important to listen to these first few ones so at least you have an idea what Scientology is about, otherwise you won't understand the conversations that are being talked about in later episodes. Oh, we're going down the rabbit hole into that amazing world of Scientology. All right. Welcome to today's podcast. It will be all about what is Scientology. Uh, It's quite a complex thing to talk about. um, And unless you are one, you don't really know what it is. And so I thought in this podcast, I'll just explain exactly what Scientology is. Basically, it's a religion. Um, You could also call it a collection of self-help courses. Um, And what you do is you study books uh, and you do special counselling and you do special courses to improve yourself. And um, you can also become a Scientologist as a job, basically. You can become a Scientology practitioner, which is called an auditor, someone who uh, delivers the Scientology therapy onto other people. They're called an auditor. So I'll just, I'll always clear up words so you you know what they mean. I'll I'll tell you what the words mean so you know what they mean. Um, So this religion was started by L. Ron Hubbard in the 50s. And he was an American author, successful American author. And he's also written some science fiction, uh, some really good science fiction. He's written Mission Earth, which was awesome. Um, And he's written other styles of books as well. But some people who don't like Scientology like to uh, attack it a little bit by saying, um, you know, it's all just made up because he was a science fiction author. And um, they just haven't studied Scientology. They don't really know what it's about and stuff. It's quite funny. I remember the, well, I guess one of the first times I heard of Scientology, um, I was working with someone who uh, was a bit of an idiot, let's be honest. And uh, I remember we were sorting mail, and I think um, a sign, something from Scientology must have came through in the mailing. And uh, it was just funny. I would have sought a lot of Scientologist mail, but I didn't, just didn't even know what it was. Um, anyway, and um, so he goes. He said, "He said, oh, see, this is Scientology or whatever." And he goes, huh, "They." Uh, he goes, "It was all. It was all written by this guy called L. Ron Hubbard. He's a science fiction author. Science fiction, and they, and they actually believe it. It's just like he's a science fiction author, and um, and I was just like." Okay, like I didn't know, I had no idea what, what he was talking about, but I get I get the point that he was making. Like he was having a typical dig at someone's religion, the same as people you know bag the Bible or something like that and say something critical, like oh, it's science fiction. Or what do they say about the Bible? They go, oh, I don't know, something like the world wasn't made five thousand years ago or something like that. And um, so I found that funny. Uh, 
because it's just it's interesting when people have an opinion on something that they don't know about. I think that's a, that's what has a lot to do with the world actually. That um, there's so many people who spew their opinions about things they don't even know what they're talking about. Um, you know, um, the Scientologists who are listening to this, by the way, I mean they might uh, disagree with me about certain things, but it's not like I'm going to be talking about stuff that I just totally don't know about. And it's not like I'm saying that I'm totally right as well. Um, some people have this attitude where they, they literally talk about things on podcasts or on YouTube videos or something. And it's something they don't even really know about, but like they, they talk about it and they talk with definiteness. Like they definitely know what they're talking about. And that's why it's important to have this podcast and to listen to this episode because there's so much false information out there, especially about uh, Scientology. And it's such a complex thing. Um, that you need to have a good source to go to where you can get good information from and not get confused by all these things. Anyway, so back to uh, what is Scientology. Yeah, so it's a religion, a collection of self-help books and stuff, and it started in the 50s. And um, also the Church of Scientology was started in the 50s. So it's kind of like, you know, there's Christianity, the religion, but then there's like the Catholic Church, like a church, a big organization, which um, has people who work in it and all that sort of stuff. And um, so, yes, yeah, so the, Ch- the Church of Scientology started in the 50s, and uh, L. Ron Hubbard was um, setting it up and running it. He was, I might have already mentioned this, but he was the guy who started Scientology. And, um, and he was setting up the churches, and, uh, uh, and he started to stop being involved with the running of the church in the late seventies and started to get old. And so the last 10 years of his life, he wasn't too much involved with the church. Um, and the, uh, the church started to fall into a, a bit of a, you know, rough state because he wasn't there fully able to look after it and stuff. And, uh, it actually got worse. And, um, that kind of explains for why, uh, the average person has a bit of a bad idea of Scientology or they've heard weird stuff like it's a cult and stuff like that because uh, the church went bad. And <laughs> it's kind of awkward for a lot of people who like Scientology because it's like they're like, oh, something good and then just went weird and bad. And it's like, oh, you know. But thankfully there's there's many people who are doing Scientology that aren't involved with the church and um, a lot of those people will be featured as guests um on this podcast and um, so it's keeping Scientology alive and keeping it away from a corrupt organization because um, churches, uh, governments, big corporations, they just tend to get corrupted. Anything big gets corrupted and um, so that's what happened to the church. Uh, it's a long story. Um, but anyway, so so if you are a Scientologist, you'd be, you know, doing these courses and studying the books and um, improving yourself. So you might wonder what well, what are these sort of courses involved and that sort of stuff. Well, there, there's lots of different types of things and some of it's therapy. Some of it's therapy that's like even uh, as interesting thing as like, you know, touch that wall. Like you have to get a person to touch a wall and a lot of it sounds so wacky, but, um, it really helps a person and it's really interesting. Um, it really expands someone's mind and it's gives people self-confidence back and there's, there's lots of good stuff that you can get from it. Um, if it's done wrong, I think it can also send people crazy. That's, that's how, that's how interesting this Scientology is. Um, I think if you, if you do it badly, you can send someone a bit loopy. And I think that's what's going on in the church. Um, it's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Anyway, so what do Scientologists basically believe? They basically believe that um, we are like spirits and they're called Thetans. So that's what I want to to call them. And it's like... Theta represents thought. It's like pieces of thought. So that's what you are. That's what I am. So we can be in a body 
we can be out of a body, right? Like a ghost that's out, a ghost is out of a body. It's just a piece of thought walking around. That's a Satan, a ghost. If you see a ghost, it's a spirit. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what that is. So we are, we are a spirit that's in a body. And Scientology just basically believe that, um, we, uh, when, when your body dies, you, um, you reincarnate. So you get born again into a baby body and your spirit goes to the baby and then you're born again. Okay. So that's basically what Scientologists believe. Um, I've got to keep it all simple here. I think, yeah, anyway. And, um, it's very interesting because a lot of people and a lot of, like bad scientists and that sort of stuff who are avoiding the true information of this world and what's actually going on, they say that we're not spirits when there's a lot of evidence suggesting that we're spirits and there's a lot of evidence to prove that reincarnation does exist. And that's one of the things L. Ron Hubbard did with his Scientology and stuff. He managed to really work out that, yes, reincarnation does exist and we do reincarnate. Um, another interesting thing is that L. Ron Hubbard said that he was the reincarnation of Buddha, and Buddha uh, was from the year, uh, maybe, I'm trying to think, I think it was maybe, I don't know, minus 2000 BC or something, or minus 500 BC, I think it was minus 500 BC, anyway, Buddha was really big, and in and amongst uh, Asian culture, he's kind of like the Jesus of Asia, that's why you got Buddha statues and all these sort of things, and but in the Western culture, we, we have more Jesus statues because people praise Jesus. And, um, yeah, I think Jesus was a similar sort of personality to um, to L. Ron Hubbard. Um, apparently, Jesus was talking about reincarnation, that sort of stuff. But the Bible has been changed and stuff over the years. So it's hard getting the real true word of what Jesus was saying. And that's what's very interesting to see what happened to Jesus and seeing what's happening to L. Ron Hubbard with the church and stuff is that they're changing his, his writings and stuff. And in 2,000 years' time, it could be very far from what the original idea that he was trying to get across and trying to teach. And that's what I feel like the same with Jesus. I think it's really – it's hard to get the true word of Jesus. I really think it's hard to get his teachings and that sort of stuff. I think it's so lost in translations. And some things are intentionally changed – in order to, um, in order for someone to profit from them, and that's what seems like it's going on in the church. But the independent movement's great because it's it's keeping the original materials that L. Ron Hubbard published when he was alive, the ones that say by L. Ron Hubbard, you know, not by L. Ron Hubbard Library, nineteen ninety one, when L. Ron Hubbard wasn't even alive. Um. So yeah, so basically that's what we believe, and we. We, so we believe we're a spirit that reincarnates and stuff, and that, that um, you need to do Scientology in order to be as happy and healthy and strong as possible because illnesses and problems and all that sort of stuff apparently come from uh, emotional issues that you have, problems in your mind that you have. So you do Scientology to, come, to become the best that you can become. So, and also, so that when you do, when when you do pass away and that sort of stuff and reincarnate, you also have other options as a spirit, as a Thetan. You have other you have other things that you can do. You don't have to just die and then have to go back into a baby body all the time. You know. I think there might be other dimensions and stuff. You sort of also do Scientology as well to find out more about God, and I found out more and more about what God sort of is and infinity is. And um, it is this kind of idea that, uh, you know, you keep on doing Scientology, not just to get better, but also to be become a bit of a Superman almost, like be able to move objects with your mind and... Yeah, you definitely, maybe not Superman, but there definitely is a thing that you become more and more psychic um, as you do it. And I've noticed that. And 
when you do Scientology and you do it well, the counseling and the course as well, you do bring out in you these psychic abilities um, that people have, uh, like reading minds and predicting the future and all these sorts of things because we all are apparently a little bit psychic. And you can learn these things from other sources. There's lots of um, yeah, other sources where you can learn these things. But um, apparently Scientology is the best at learning it and it's the most efficient um, and it's the best way to go about it and it's the most simplest. And um, yeah, but then there's also a thing is if we're a spirit that's in a body, right, there's also this thing called uh, astral walking or astral projection or exteriorization. And it's this thing where the spirit can just, you as a spirit can just leave your body and just leave your body in a chair or something and you can go off as a spirit and travel around, which is really cool. And I would love to be able to do that. And I've, you know, I've spoken to many people who can do that. Um, and remote viewing is sort of similar to this as well. Anyway, it's this idea or something of a spirit leaving. And so you can apparently you do Scientology and you can achieve that ability. And I think there's a specific uh, course called specific ordering called the uh, L Rundowns or something where it's specifically the end result is that you can just go exterior at will and stuff and just go exterior whenever you want. And I think Elron Hubbard as well said that he would. Elron Hubbard was one of these guys. I think you could just go exterior and cruise around and go to other parts of the world and stuff and look at them. And just a few day, days ago, I actually interviewed a psychic lady who reckons that she can just do that. But I, I don't know if she does it as as a spirit or if she does it as remote viewing where you get pictures of the location. So there's there's two types to it. All this spiritual stuff is kind of interesting. So there's two types to it. You can sit where you are and be psychic and know what's happening in New York City right now. And I don't know, see pictures of it from right now, just from your psychic ability, or you can actually stay where you are and leave your body, and as a spirit, travel all the way to New York and hang out there, and then come back and then know. And that's called more exteriorization, where you actually separate from the body. Anyway, this stuff is really interesting. This is why it's all like going down the rabbit hole into Alice in Wonderland land, and. You know, people can say it's all loopy and bullshit and that sort of stuff, but when it comes to these things like remote viewing and exteriorization and stuff, you can put someone in a room and say, and you can go into another room and you can hold up a, a card that says number five on it, and they're in the other room and you go, okay, cool, tell me what's on the card, and they can they can tell you what's on the card. And it's like, how the hell do they know that? Like, the CIA has experimented with these things and they've proven and they know it and they're keeping it secret. They know that you can do these things like exteriorization and astral projection and all these psychic abilities. They are true. So this all isn't bullshit. Um, cause a lot of people are just like, they roll your eyes at things. Like you talk at something, you mentioned something about an alien, they roll and you, and they roll their eyes like, Oh yeah, that's, that's so unreal. And they haven't done any investigation into aliens to see if they're, is aliens. They just instantly say it's ridiculous. And that sort of attitude is wrong. And if you're listening to this and you have that sort of attitude, don't do it. Don't judge something before you've even done anything about it. Before you know anything about it. It's ridiculous. It's like saying, um, it's like saying, oh yeah, that's a shit movie, but you've never seen the movie. It's just, you just heard someone talking about it and, but you never actually seen it yourself. You know, because you're missing out on all these things. And speaking of that guy who I was who, who from earlier, who I said I worked with, who said something, you know, sort of negative about Scientology. Um, you know, looking at that guy, that guy is a loser. And I don't mean to be mean, but he is a loser. He's got bad teeth because he eats too much chocolate bars. He's got a bad job, right? He's not a success as a person. He's probably you know, just mildly sort of negative all the time a little bit. And he also said he was interested in writing as well. And he's probably trying to become a hit writer. And he's never made it. And he was about 55 years old when he told me this thing when I was working with him. But see how he wasn't successful and he wasn't really winning and wasn't really enjoying life. And see how it's because of these bad attitudes he has where he just says, you know, this thing's stupid and he doesn't even know about it. 
these sort of bad attitudes you just shouldn't have. If he had a positive attitude and was like, oh, you know, yeah, I heard L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer. That's um, interesting. You know, um, okay, maybe it's all bullshit, but, you know, I don't know. I haven't studied it. How can I judge it? I don't, I don't even know what it is. I'll check it out and find it out. And then he goes and does Scientology, and then he gets all the improvements from it. His IQ goes up. All these sorts of good benefits come from it. He gets these psychic abilities. And then suddenly he's not a loser. You know? So that's one thing you can always know, is that when someone's giving you advice, always look at them and the type of person that they are. Because you'll notice, it's quite funny, you notice most you notice most of the time people who are just dishing out advice are usually losers i, I mean like seriously if, if if you look at it if i think back to throughout my life most i mean i'm i, I most of the time i don't get advice from good people most of the people who give me advice are usually negative idiots who are just complaining about something just complaining about something that annoys them so you know just don't take advice from people who aren't successful. And so, you know, and, you know, you can criticize Elron Hubbard because maybe some of the things he did in his life were a bit dodgy. But when he passed away, he was worth a lot of money and he'd created a lot of good things. He'd written some great books and he'd inspired a lot of people. So he'd done some pretty cool stuff. So, um,. Yeah, so so you so you do Scientology to get all these abilities because imagine if you could just leave your body, how cool, how much fun would that be? But also, um, how much easier that would be if, for example, you're in a bad situation or something like you're about to get tortured or you're in a terrorist attack or just it's a very beneficial thing to be able to do, just leave your body and float around. I mean, that's just so it's such a handy thing to do. Um, and I think that people are like, uh, people are like technology almost in that you can't just stay the same. Like if you think of a mobile phone, mobile phones from 10 years ago just aren't being used at all and just in the bin screwed up. But the way that Apple stay around is because they always release a new phone every year and it's always a bit better and they're always researching, trying to get better and better and better. And then what you get at the end of it, you end up getting an awesome phone that's really successful and it hangs around for ages. So people are like that. We are like that. We have to continually be improving ourselves, evolving and learning. Otherwise, we'll end up being like that person who I worked with who I was talking bad about, with the bad teeth, eating chocolate bars and just being a loser. Okay, we'll end up being like that and end up not being good and end up being unhealthy. So you've got to continue researching and looking at things. And one of the things you've got to look into is Scientology. And I recommend looking into Buddhism. I recommend looking into um, atheism. I recommend looking into Satanism. Serious. Everything. I recommend looking into the Bill of Rights, the American Constitution. Read the Bible. Everything. You've got to be researching constantly. You know, you don't you don't bury your hand, head in the sand and block your mind off to, for possible information. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying you should just believe everything you hear. But what I'm saying is you've got to continually be educating yourself and improving yourself. And this isn't like the school system makes learning out to be shit when it's not. They make learning out to be boring when it's not. It's actually really cool, and that's what you start finding out about Scientology when you in Scientology. You start, you start studying things almost in a similar way, like in a classroom, like at school. But it's kind of cool, and it's really interesting. The school wasn't like that. Anyway, so this is why I recommend, uh, if you are another religion, don't be concerned about um, uh, becoming a new religion. Just Read and at Scientology and read it a bit. You don't have to. This doesn't have to become your religion. You know, just read it and know about it and learn and help. At least it would just make make you a lot smarter. And at least when you hear someone talk about it, you can have an idea of what they're talking about, not just go boom question mark in your head and not really know what they're talking about. Um, 
I really recommend that. It's a uh, it's a good thing to look into. Um, and if you can, if you can try some of the counselling as well, try it. Um, with me, it was, and with most people, it's like you, unless you're probably born into it, but you, you try it out, and you end up just liking it, and then you end up just going, nah, this is pretty spot on, and this this is my religion, really. And uh, but I, I know someone who was a uh, who is a Mormon. And he he did some Scientology and stuff, and he um he's still a Mormon. And he his opinion of Scientology was more that he thinks it shouldn't be called a religion; it should be called more just self help courses. Uh, and that was my initial in, impression of Scientology when I first came across it. I thought I thought you know this is a um this really is just self help courses and stuff. Anyway, so I kind of described what Scientologists basically. Uh, believe, but I, I guess I might as well clear up something that uh, there is an idea out there of some uh, sort of out there, like a story involving aliens and 75 million years ago and stuff. So some people mention, you know, oh, this is what Scientologists believe and tell this um, out there story. So um, I might might as well just explain that because I'm not going to bother lying to you. Because I remember when I first came into it, I went into the, the Church of Scientology uh, in Melbourne, Australia, and um, I did say something. I oh, was to deal with aliens, and the guy who was working there just said, "No, that, that doesn't exist." And I just knew he was lying. It just seemed like he was lying, and it was just like, you know, just come on, just tell me, tell me what's going on. Like, anyway, so he lied to me. So I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think it's worthwhile. Um. There is uh, stuff where Aaron Hubbard talks about aliens. Um, he uh, seemed to have known about them. And many people these days know about aliens. I mean, just go on the internet. There's just videos everywhere. There's lectures everywhere of all these people talking about aliens. It, like, it's a whole community of people. And uh, some people get together and do these meditations and... and <laughs> I'm not kidding, they get around in like, they go together out in the bush in like a circle and they do these meditations and they make these UFOs come visit them. And they literally see them, yeah. And I, I a few days ago, in interviewed this psychic and she um, she showed me footage of her, of her phone of aliens and she, it what, the thing is with aliens, right, and with these psychic abilities, they only ha seem to really happen to certain people. Like if you're a psychic, you tend to have all these like mind reading things and all these interesting stuff go on to you but you know 99 out of 100 other people none of that stuff happens to but it just happens to this person and so it's a similar thing with the aliens i noticed that some people tend to see aliens a lot in this like ufos in the sky or they just have weird stuff happen and it only really happens to them and other people are just like and me just barely anything happens like out of the ordinary but for them they have all this stuff so Anyway, um, yeah, so there's heaps of information about aliens, and so it seemed like L. Ron Hubbard uh, was switched on to that and knew about it and stuff, and uh, in his, some of his science fiction books, he has mentions aliens and UFOs and stuff. Um, but, so that, so in the, in the Scientology uh, writings, there's lots of writings and courses and books to read and stuff. There is some things that, that talk about uh, aliens like being on Mars and stuff, um, and there is this uh, this Xenu story or whatever, um, the seventy five million year ago one, and um, uh, and it's like it's it's misleading to say you know this is what Scientologists believe and tell this like out there story about Xenu. Um, it's kind of not quite right because firstly, not all science, like most Scientologists don't even know about that story. Um, they ha like they haven't even read that because there's so much stuff to read in Scientology and, and stuff. So most of them haven't even read that. And also, if they have read it, um, it doesn't necessarily believe that, – that doesn't mean they have to believe it, if you know what I mean. Like um, – yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's like, it's like, yeah, okay, so that – that was written down, but 
just because that's one of the in in one of the books in, of many like it, just because that's one of the writings from Elrond Hubbard in, in many thousands and thousands of writings. That, 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 and it doesn't mean that that person believes it. That Scientologist actually believes it. They could have just read it and go, oh, okay, cool, I've studied it. Yeah, because the thing with Scientology is you. What's true is what's true for you. Like you study it and you believe whatever you want to believe. Um, you don't have to believe anything. So I haven't actually officially read the Xenu story, but when I do read it, I might believe it or I might not. But for someone to say just on the internet or in the media, go, oh, this is what Scientologists believe, this is what Andy Nolch believes, it's like... That's not really true, mate. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And that's why, that's the problem with Scientology because so many people talk about it who don't even know what they're talking about. Like, it's for people who actually know the topic and who actually uh, talk about it and and give good information about it, it's hard enough as it is, let alone is people who just like do like a three-day crash course in Scientology and think they can just shout out and say this is what Scientology is and that and, that, and when they don't even really know. Um, I mean, the worst is when someone comments on, I haven't even read a Scientology book, like not even one book and they comment on it and it's like, you can't, you really can't do that. You have to, you know, it's quite a complex thing. And I think, I think one of the, one of the bad things about Scientology is that it's hard. I think like from a, from a, a reading point of view and from a, I don't think it's, it's not like reading a Harry Potter book and it's not like it's written in a real simple way. It's, um, it's really intelligent and it, uh, you've got to be very knowledgeable about things and, um, it's not for, you know, I don't know, redneck or something, you know? So it's, uh, it's not really good because it makes it harder for the average person to read it and understand it because they can get quite confused and, uh, I mean, I don't want to trash talk the, the church that much, but I've already started and it's just part of this podcast is you just got to tell the truth. I've got to tell the truth. And this, this podcast is, um, uh, you know, anyone can speak on it who's a Scientologist, but, um, it, it'll tend to be more on the pro independent side, pro, like it would tend to be a bit negative churchy. Um, anyway. Some of the things I noticed in the church is that they'd changed Elrond Hubbard's books and I swear, you, you, you looked at the old version of the book and the new version and you, let's say you're reading one sentence from the old version and the new version. The new version, they'd changed thing. They'd changed. They'd changed like one word in there and it made the whole sentence confusing. And... Like you, you go okay. You'd read the old version, and you, and I'll go, oh, okay, that makes sense, fine. Then I will read the new one, and I'd have to like pull out a dictionary, and I'd have to reread it, and I'll be like, what the hell does this sentence say? Like it just sounds confusing, and so, like, um, it's a whole other thing. The changes in in the books that have been made, and it's quite nasty the changes because the books have been made a lot worse, um, but. Yeah, that also been made confusing. So what the thing is, when you're studying philosophy and you're studying Scientology, it's not really easy anyway, let alone when someone goes along and edits it and screws it up and makes it hard to stop people from studying it. Um, and that's why I really feel sorry for church members because they're quite confused. And when I was studying the books, I was just like, what the hell? Like it was just hard to study and all this sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, you get... You know, people who are slightly confused because it's hard philosophy to get anyway and you have to be really knowledgeable about things. And also it's um, it's intentionally been changed within the church. But that's what's great about the independent movement. You don't have to just go buy books that were published in the 70s and you're fine. Um, so, yeah, so if you say alien... So, if you, so because there is writings in Scientology about um, aliens... Um, and there's many different references to them. Uh, I would say, if you ask just a general question, you know, do Scientologists believe in aliens? I would say yes. And there's another, um, but not necessarily the Xenia story or whatever, but I'd say yes. Um, 
there's uh there are there's another reason as well for the the belief in aliens um also not just from Elwin Hubbard's writings to people read it and then sort of believe it and agree with it and stuff and say they believe that there's aliens um it's also the fact that when you do um Scientology counseling it involves going over past memories and some people go into memories that were from their previous lifetime in their in their previous body so from like the 1800s or something and then sometimes people go back further like um thousands of years and they go back to when they had an alien body so someone might be um uh, might be uh, have a painful memory that they're getting counseling on and it's from when they had a uh, a giant green body or something on some other part and they're in some other part of the universe like not on earth so you know they might not necessarily they might just be like what the hell is this memory that's going on it could be my imagination or it could be true and so you know but then if you look at the evidence of alien, there's, aliens, there's just so much evidence. Check out Dr. Stephen Greer. He's, um, he knows his stuff. And he knows, like, there's so much evidence for aliens. It's just, like, unbelievable. So anyway, so so if you've been doing Scientology counseling and you have an experience with a memory from a long time ago where you were an alien, um you know, you start to believe in aliens because you're like, well, you know, I had this memory and stuff. And and about the past life thing, in case, because all this stuff might sound real unbelievable, I just want to give you, there's evidence to back these things up. And I'll give you an example. Like, so Hubbard in the 50s would be um, auditing someone, so giving someone the counselling and that. And um, he would go to a... Uh, He'll be auditing someone's memory or whatever, and he'll be going to their previous lifetime. By the way, people do this today. It's called like hypnotic regressions and stuff, and it's really normal. The psychic who I interviewed a few days ago, she she like offered to do it to me and stuff like, and and she knew about past lives and stuff like all this sort of stuff is just. It was a lot newer when he was releasing it in the fifties. It's a lot more common now, but um, don't just be so shocked about past lives thing. There's a lot of evidence suggesting it. The university just haven't caught on to it yet. Anyway, and so um, he'll be ordering someone on a memory from an earlier lifetime, and that person would say that her name was Pippi Wingstocking, and she would have a house in Cherry Lane in England, and it would have a, like a purple street light with a little blue sticker on it. Anyway, so go over this memory. Uh, usually the memories that involve something bad happening because it's like those memories affect worse, like when you get shot or stabbed or big emotional upset. Anyway, so Hubbard's going over this woman's memory from her previous lifetime, and then he and he's he's taking notes and he's like, okay, so Cherry Lane in England with a purple pipping long stocking and a stick. He's like, oh, okay. Well, why don't I just go check this out? I, I don't. Let's see if she's making this up. So then he would go to where the information that she was saying was saying to go to and he would check it out and he'd be like, wow, how did she know that the, that street there was like that and like that and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like he would, he would, he would check the evidence out to make sure that like, you know, she wasn't just making this stuff up and, and he would find that, yeah, like these memories are being proven correct. You know what I mean? Um, there's a Scientology book called, uh, have you lived before this life? And that's one, like, I think that's sort of stories where people, um, yeah, where they, they went over the memory, then they double checked the memory to see if it's true. Um, there was a court case, apparently, uh, a lawyer told me this. There's a court case in India, apparently, where some kid was born and, um, the kid knew all this stuff about some place and the kid went to the place and just knew all this stuff, right? Cause it was, it was actually where the kid was living in the previous lifetime anyway. And apparently there was some court case involved in it and the kid had to present all this evidence and the court actually ruled that, that, 
this kid was in fact this other person from a previous lifetime and won the court case because the kid had overwhelming evidence. And so in India, see how amazing this is? You don't hear about this on the Channel 9 news, do you? This is interesting news. They just repeat the same boring crap all the time, like there was a stabbing at 7-Eleven. Who cares about a stabbing at 7-Eleven? There's so much good news you can talk about, interesting stuff, but they just report the same boring stuff over and over again. Anyway, so in India, it was proven in a court of law that this kid was actually the reincarnation of a previous person. It was proven in a court of law. That's the type of evidence we're talking about. This stuff happens all the time. Oh, sorry, I mean, I don't know if the court case thing happens all the time, but it happens all the time that kids say that they're someone from a previous lifetime, that sort of stuff. Listen to me. The evidence for reincarnation is overwhelming. Okay? And it's the same as the alien issue. It's just that you just haven't seen the evidence yet. Anyway, sort of kept from people and stuff. Um... So I think that's essentially, yeah, what, what Scientology is. It's, it's a religion, and it's also, when people say Scientology, they're kind of referring to the church. And when they go, Scientology is a cult, they're usually, like, and they're hating it. Scientology, uh, Scientology, did, Scientology took 100,000 bucks from me. A religion can't take 100,000 bucks from me, but, it, but it, a church of Scientology can. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to remember, when you think of Scientology, and someone mentions it, you've got to think, in, if they mention in a conversation or something, you've got to think, which definition of Scientology are they using? Are they using the Church of Scientology, or are they using just Scientology like a religion thing? Usually, all the negative stuff tends to be on the more Church of Scientology side, because even when you're referring to the religious side of it, the therapy and stuff, within the Church, it's got a lot of problems and stuff, so it's not really correct Scientology. It's not really right Scientology, so it's not really actual Scientology. It's dodgy, screwed up Scientology. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's essentially what Scientology is. Remember, it's two things. It's a religion, and it's also a, a, a shortening of Church of Scientology, the organization. And they just say the word Scientology instead. So it's those two things. And the uh, the religious side of it is that it's courses you do and books you study and stuff to improve yourself in order to gain pretty much psychic abilities and happiness and really good health um, and raise IQ and all that sort of stuff and also to leave your body um, and also just to find out about your past life because that's just interesting. Like imagine if you could tap into all your memories from many lifetimes, how much smarter you could be. Like you could just remember German all of a sudden. And um, I think it explains a bit for, like, you might come across someone who knows how to play the drums naturally or just knows how to paint a picture of a dog, yet they've had no training for it. Um, it's like, how the, hell, how the hell do they do it? And the person just says, I don't know, I just pick it up and do it. And they're like, yeah. And, like, because I remember, I remember seeing someone who, um, who there's a drum set and someone going on and sitting down and just couldn't do anything on it, just had no idea, obviously he'd never played it before. And then another guy just got on was just like, boom, 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 boom. And it was just like, wow, you obviously have like a natural thing for this, but it's just like, why do you have a natural thing for playing the drums? Like, how do you, how do you know what things to hit? You haven't done any drum training. That person probably played drums in a previous lifetime. It makes sense. You know? I don't think it's just, just that they're, like, spectacularly talented, like, naturally. It's just like, but how did you know that? Like, I don't know. It's just like, if they got taught it, and then they learnt fast, and they were really awesome after that, then I'd be like, wow, they just have a knack for it, and they've got a good body for playing drums. But if they just don't even need to get taught, and they can just do it, it's like, what the hell is with that? You know? Probably because they just, it's something they did in their previous lifetimes and they can't really remember their life, last lifetimes and that, but they're just, it's still kind of there because the thing with, is it with this whole, um, you know, remembering past lives is it isn't really easy, but like it's kind of there and people sort of have it. And some people have it a lot more than others. Like some people know who they were in their previous lifetime. 
and lifetime before that with other people don't. You've got these kids who are born like the kid in India. They just know. It's just like, wow, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and um, it's kind of, it's, I would also say it's a bit of a new agey sort of religion, one of these new agey ones, because it was like kind of before the 50s, there wasn't really, I didn't say, there wasn't as much as a bigger variety of religions, but it seems like in the past 50 years, it's like there's more new agey things and more like age of Aquarius. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's just, it's, it's, bit, it's a bit one of these new modern, you know, new agey sort of things with different ideas about things and how the world works and stuff. And um, I think it's kind of like a um, a modern 21st century religion because a lot of the other ones are old. Like if you think about Islam and Christianity and Buddhism, they're all like over 2,000 years old, you know. They've been around for ages, but there's been no modern proper specific religion. Like seriously, look at it. Judaism, Islam. Christianity, Sikhism, Taoism, like there's no like been like modern religion that's like born in the 20th century with electronic, electronics and technology and stuff. And so Scientology is like the world's most modern religion. And it's, um, yeah, hence why, you know, you don't go into a pray mat and bow and eat rice. You like use an electronic device called an e-meter. Oh, that's another question. You might be wondering what the e-meter is. Okay, so the e meter is something that you is cans you hold on to and it just measures like energy. I'm not going to bother fully explaining it. it. Just measures energy and basically you can when you're the person who's giving the counseling to the to you, they can see on the meter um, when you have uh, bad thoughts or when you have painful thoughts or something. It helps them with the counseling, right? It's so like that. So they they'll be doing the counselling and looking at you and just looking at the media and seeing what the needle does on the meter, and um, yeah, it'll just help them to to find painful thoughts and stuff because it really does seem like the basic, simple idea of this auditing is that you sit in a chair. Um, it's because all these different times, but the really really common one is just you sit in the chair and you just talk about something that's a bad experience you had. That seems to be the real basic thing of the ordinary. There's many different types, which is really cool. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and, and uh, there's a bit of belief in aliens and stuff. So I think that's basically it, what Scientologists believe and what is Scientology. And um, that's about it. So, um, you know, if you like this podcast, subscribe to it and... Uh, it's in iTunes and it's on YouTube at Andy Nolch's YouTube channel. Um, thanks for listening. There'll be a few more podcasts coming up with just basic information about Scientology. And then after that, there'll be some good guests and, uh, you know, some divings into into the controversies. Because, yeah, there's another thing. There's two sides of Scientology. You can talk about the, the spiritual side and the therapy, which is cool, but you can also talk about the gossip side and the dramas and the controversy, which is a lot to do with the church. And there's so much going on there. Like, it's it's pretty cool. Like, it's just never ending. Like, and you might notice that Scientology always, every now and then, is always in the news. There's just always something going on, and there's always some drama. And so it's... um. It's got that fun element to it. It's got that funny element of just the whole, like, let's just go into the whole drama side of it and stuff. And anyway, so there's going to be, you know, both, you know, controversies and, you know, just general interesting Scientology information. And anyway, it should be pretty exciting. So um, until next time, take care of yourself and do what you want to do. Meow.